Lord and welcome back to the Vacation Bible School High School class of Christ Tabernacle Apostolic Church. My name is Minister Cardithia Moore Jenkins, also known as Minister Didi. We're so glad to have you back on day two of Vacation Bible School 2020. So let's get into it. We are studying the names of God. And as you can remember from, from yesterday, we talked about why is it important that we know the names of God? How is that helpful to us? And we discussed that the names of God um, are used to describe his character. They're used to describe his nature and his relationship with mankind. And so by knowing the names of God, that helps us to have some insight into how he operates, how he feels about us, his plans, and so on and so forth. So today we are going to, oh, let me just back up one second because we also talked a little bit about how names are important to us because they often do more than just identify an individual. Um, we, they can actually reveal their who they are and help us to understand more about their personality and things like that. And I think I remember telling you yesterday that um, about my name and the meaning of my name and how I got my name and that my name means Car uh, my name is Cardithia and it means the heart of God and how I didn't like my name. But as I've grown older, I've come to appreciate my name and really wear it with a badge of honor that my name means the heart of God and what a big honor and also what a big responsibility um, that name has with it because I feel like I'm compelled to demonstrate love and kindness and compassion in every area of my life simply because I have a better understanding of what my name means and what the heart of God looks like to me as it's revealed in the word of God. So keep that in mind and I thought I asked you all to see if you could do some research and find out about your own name and what's the meaning of your name? What is the origin of your name? Are you named after someone else, a grandparent or a cousin or a character, a movie star, um, a celebrity? What is the origin of your name? Because um, I bet you there's probably a story that's associated with that. And that may give some insight into your character and your personality as well. So let's go into, I just want to let you know the names that we're going to cover today. Between today and tomorrow, we're going to cover a total of 12 names and 12 names of God. And so those names are Adonai, El, Elohim, El Shaddai, Emmanuel, and Jehovah Jireh. Those are the six, six names, excuse me, that we're going to review on today. So I want you to grab your Bible as always. You should always have your Bibles on hand and let's go to the word of the Lord. Let's start out with Adonai. So Adonai means the Lord, my great Lord. Sounds like something that someone's proclaimed, right? The Lord, my great Lord. And the application for using this name or um, says God is the master and majestic Lord. God is our total authority. Can you imagine someone in the Bible saying the Lord, my great Lord and speaking to his majestic nature his total authority when someone is a ruler, right? He is a ruler. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's a ruler over our lives. And therefore, um, he's our great Lord. And so it's important to, to remember that. And then if you look at the Bible references, the Bible references um, list Psalm 8, Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5, Ezekiel 16, 8, and Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. We're not going to go into reading those because we have a lot of information to cover. But I do want to say to you that um, to hear a little bit more about uh, Adonai. Adonai is plural. It is derived from the singular Adon, A-D-O-N, which means Lord. This term 
was um, was pronounced in substitution of Yahweh, which is Y H W H, which is considered to considered too sacred to be uttered. Um, back in um, the Old Testament, the Jews believed that the name of God was so sacred and so holy that they should not even uttered the fullness of his name. And so his name would be written Y W H Y H W H. Sorry, excuse me for that. His name would be written Y H W H, which is short for, which is abbreviated for Yahweh. And it means Lord. So let's go on to the next name of God, which is L, E-L. And L means the strong one. And the application and the way that we would use this is he is more powerful than any false God. God will overcome all obstacles. We can depend on God. And the Bible references are Exodus 15, 2, Numbers 23, 22, and Deuteronomy 7, 9. Can you imagine that, particularly when you think about the children of Israel walking through, um, you know, tr going through the desert and wandering around and recognizing that there's no God more powerful that our God is more powerful than any false God. But you got to remember also the children of Israel, while Moses was away for a little few days, they decided to build their own golden calf. And so there are times when we have to be really, really careful. We'll know that God is powerful and he's greater than ever, any other God, any other false God. But somehow we'll make our phone, our God, our shoes, our job, our, our relationship that we have in our life, or some other thing, drugs, alcohol, we will turn those, allow those things to become the God in our life. And we will worship those things and we will seek out those things. We will use those things to comfort us instead of seeking after the, the comforting um, and the power of God. So know that our God, the one and true God, the strong one, the strong one is more powerful than any other God and he will overcome all obstacles and we can depend on him. Let's go to the third name of God. Elohim, Elohim. And the meaning for Elohim is the all powerful one, the creator. And many times when I pray, I say he is the uh, creator of the heavens and the earth. That's my way of acknowledging him as Elohim in my life and throughout the world. Um, that's the way that I choose to say it. The application says God is the all powerful creator of the universe. God knows all, creates all and is everywhere at all times. Elohim is the plural of L, which we just discussed. So it's important to uh, remember that Elohim means he's the all powerful one. He's the one that actually created the heavens and the earth and the grass and the moon and the stars and everything that we see is created by God. And so um, when you pray, you can say Elohim. And that's when you're acknowledging him as the all powerful one, as the creator. As you go about this, these lessons and you're learning these names, I want you to practice using them in your prayer. Practice using them in your everyday language so that you become more and more familiar. Just like when you get your vocabulary words at school, right? You get a list of words and you're supposed to write them out four times, write them out 10 times, whatever it is. And then you're supposed to write out the definitions, right? Which is what we have here. And then also you are supposed to use it in a sentence, right? So I want you to practice using the names of God in your prayer life. Practice pronouncing them, letting them run over your tongue. Um, 
and help and that will help you to gain um, develop more connection with God in, in practicing that and the next name of God is El Shaddai El Shaddai and El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one the God of the mountains God Almighty the all-sufficient one the application says God is the all-sufficient source of all of our blessings God is all-powerful our problems are not too big for God to handle and in thinking about God as the all-sufficient one he's the source of all of our blessings it's we should remember that and when we find that we are lacking something or we are in need something remind yourself that you serve the all-sufficient one Re rehearse that in your prayer God, you are the all-sufficient one. I know that you can bless me with this scholarship. I know that you can give my mom or that my dad, bless them with that job that they want or that car that we need for our family or whatever you may, you may stand in need of. You can declare that to God. Remind him of his word. Remind him of his character, that you know his character by acknowledging and saying you are the all-sufficient one and because you are the all-sufficient one I come to you I lay my burdens on you I tell you what my needs are what my heart's desires are because you're my God and I trust you so use those words in your prayer life as well I wanted to read something else to you all um, that's El Shaddai right Uh, for El Shaddai, some scholars suggest that Shaddai refers to God's power evident in his judgment. Others suggest that El Shaddai means God of the mountains. God refers to himself as El Shaddai when he confirms his covenant with Abraham. So time and time again in the word of God, he refers to himself. He tells you who he is. He tells you who he is. We just have to pay attention and we have to read our word, right? To know what he says. Let's go on to the next one. The next word is, uh, the next name of God is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The meaning is God with us. I am. And I'm sure many of you probably know someone by the name of Emmanuel. It's a very popular name. It's actually one of my favorite names is Emmanuel. And many times today we see it spelled with an E. Sometimes it's spelled with an I. Some girls' names are Emmanuela with an A on the end. But it means God with us or the I am. And the application for this is Jesus is God in our midst. I am all the full, fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. Excuse me. I made a typo. In him, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. So Jesus is God in our midst. And he is God, the father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, the physical body all in one came as one person in the bodily form. He is the great I am. Maybe you've heard that before. He's the great I am. The Bible references are Isaiah 7, 14, verse, um, also Isaiah 8, verses 8 through 10, and then Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And I want to read for you this one as well. Emmanuel. This name indicates that Jesus is more than man. He is also God. Isaiah said that the child born to the virgin would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature. 
So we have the very manifestation and presence of God himself in a bodily, physical form in the person of Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. And we know that Emmanuel, God with us, was the sacrifice, right? He was the lamb who went to the cross, who was sacrificed for our sins to atone us so that we could be restored back to relationship with God. And then finally, no, nope, I think one more. Um, Jehovah Yahweh. Jehovah Yahweh. And the meaning is I am, once again, the one who is the self-existent one. I am the one who is the self-existent one. The application says, God never changes. His promises never fail. When we are faithless, he is faithful. We need to obey him. And the Bible references are listed as Exodus 3, 14, Exodus 6, 2 through 24, Exodus 34, verses 5 through 7, and Psalm 102. He is the self-existent one. God was not created by anyone. He is self-existent, self-contained. He is the great I am. And sometimes that's a little bit hard to wrap our heads around because as people, we want to know what's the origin of something, right? And mankind has tried to explain how earth came about, or how the sun became came about and science tries to um, explain that through the big bang theory and they use evolution to explain how we are as men um, as women and that we started from some other smaller creatures and eventually came up and evolved from apes we don't believe that as people of God. As the children of God, we do not believe in evolution and the Big Bang Theory. We believe that we came by the self-existing one, the self, the all-sufficient one, the one who created everything, who was self-existing. He wasn't created by anything or anyone else. All right, so keep that in mind. And the Word of God backs that up as well. And let me just um, expound on this one a little bit. Also known as Yahweh, which is, as I mentioned earlier, Y-H-W-H. A 16th century German translator wrote the name Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, -H, using the vowels of Adonai because the, ac the ancient Jewish text from which he was translating had the vowels of Adonai under the consonants of Y-H-W-H. -H. By doing this, he incorrectly came up with the name Jehovah, which is used today. So um, it was through translation that we got the name Jehovah, but originally the name was Yahweh. So a little bit of history there. And then finally, I think this is our sixth name, is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The application says, just as God provided a ram as a substitute for Isaac, he provided his son Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice. God will meet all of our needs. And the Bible references are Genesis 22, 13, 13, 13 uh, Psalm 23, Mark 10, 45, and Romans 8 and 2. If you remember the story of Isaac, Isaac's dad was told that he was to sacrifice him and to take him up on the mountain and to sacrifice him, basically to kill him. And his dad being obedient to God, he took his son up the hill and he brought some kindling wood and he brought everything he needed to sacrifice his son. And his son said, well, dad, where, where's the sacrifice? 
because the dad never told him that he was going to be the sacrifice. And he said that God would provide, that God would provide. And the father tied him up, put him to be the sacrifice. And then he was halted and told by the Holy Spirit to look over and there was a ram in the bush, stuck in the bush. And that was used to be the sacrifice. The father showed God that he was obedient, even if he had to give the life of his own son. Even if he had to give the life of his own son, how many of us would be willing to give up our child? sacrifice the life of our child in order to be obedient to God but he was but God provided an escape for his son and provided an alternate sacrifice God will provide Jehovah Jireh and there's a very popular song that says Jehovah Jireh my provider Jehovah Nisi Lord you reign in victory Jehovah Shalom my Prince of Peace and I worship you because of who you are. The name of the song is Because of Who You Are by Vicki Yoey. So take a look at it. I'm sure you can find it on, your, on YouTube. The names of God, as I said earlier, they give us insight into God's character, windows into his connection and his relationship with us individually and globally as mankind. Practice these names. Spend some time rehearsing them, using them in your prayer life, pronouncing them, and then incorporating them into your everyday language. And then also look for manifestations of how God has been a provider, how he has been victorious, how he has been um, the self-existent one, the great I am in your life, how he has shown himself as being with you, God with us. How has God shown himself being with you? How has God shown himself as God almighty in your life? Were you healed? Was a family member healed? Um, was, did God protect you all from a, a, a serious accident of some kind? There's so many ways to see the character of God in our everyday life. We just need to recognize the names that are associated with those experiences. So that's the end of part two of our Vacation Bible School of 2020 we have another couple of days to go i hope you are enjoying this lesson we're going to have some more to talk about we have six more names to talk about on tomorrow i hope you'll join us i hope you'll be back make sure you're practicing god bless you i'll see you tomorrow